Get ready for an absolute banger of a problem. This is the famous Dirichlet integral, and its solution is one of the most beautiful results in all of calculus. We need to evaluate the integral of sine of x over x from zero to infinity. This looks simple, right? But here's the trap. There is no elementary function for the antiderivative of sine of x over x. This means that the standard integration techniques like U substitution or simple integration by parts are not going to work. We need a more powerful tool. The strategy we'll use is a legendary technique known as Feynman's trick, or differentiation under the integral sign. The core idea is to introduce a new parameter, which we can call t, into our integral. This turns the integral into a function of t. Then, we can differentiate this function with respect to t, which can sometimes make the integral much easier to solve. Finally, we integrate the result back with respect to t to find our original answer. Let's define a function, i of t, by introducing an exponential term, e to the power of negative t times x, into our integral. Notice that if we set t to zero, we get back our original problem. Why this specific term? Because when we differentiate with respect to t, it will bring down a factor of negative x, which will cancel the problematic x in the denominator. So let's differentiate i of t with respect to t. We can move the derivative inside the integral, turning it into a partial derivative. The only term that depends on t is the exponential. The derivative of e to the power of negative t times x with respect to t is negative x times e to the power of negative t times x. Applying the derivative gives us this expression inside the integral. And just as planned, the x in the numerator cancels out with the x in the denominator. This is the magic of the technique. This leaves us with a much simpler integral to solve. i prime of t is equal to the negative integral from zero to infinity of sine of x times e to the power of negative t times x. This is a classic integral that requires integration by parts, twice. Let's call the indefinite integral j. We'll solve the indefinite integral first, and then apply the limits. For the first round of integration by parts, let's choose u to be sine of x and dv to be e to the power of negative t times x dx. Applying the formula u times v minus the integral of v du, we get this expression. Simplifying a bit, we now have a new integral to solve. We apply integration by parts again. This time, u is cosine of x. Substituting these into our expression for j gives us this rather long equation. After distributing the 1 over t term and simplifying the signs, we get this. Now, notice something incredible. The integral on the right is the same as our original integral, j. So we can substitute j back into the equation. We've created a recursive relationship. Now we can solve for j algebraically. Let's add 1 over t squared times j to both sides. Factoring out j on the left and combining terms on the right gives us this. Combining the term in the parenthesis on the left side, now we can multiply both sides by t squared over the quantity t squared plus 1 to isolate j. Notice the t squared terms will cancel. And there we have it the result for our indefinite integral, j. Now let's return to our derivative, i prime of t, and apply the limits of integration. We need to evaluate this expression at infinity and at zero, and subtract the results. For this to converge, we must assume t is greater than zero. As x approaches infinity, the exponential term e to the power of negative t times x goes to zero, driving the entire expression to zero. At the lower limit, when x is zero, sine of zero is zero, and cosine of zero is one. The exponential term becomes e to the zero, which is also one. So we have zero for the upper limit, minus the value at the lower limit. 
Plugging in the known values simplifies the expression inside. And after simplifying the signs, we get a beautifully simple result for our derivative. i prime of t equals negative 1 over the quantity t squared plus 1. We are almost there. We have the derivative i e prime of t. Now we just need to integrate it with respect to t to get back to i of t. The integral of negative 1 over t squared plus 1 is a standard result. It's the negative arctangent of t plus a constant of integration, c. To find the constant c, we need to evaluate our function e of t at a convenient point. Let's consider what happens as t approaches infinity. As t goes to infinity, the exponential term e to the power of negative t times x goes to zero for any positive x. This makes the entire integrand zero, so the integral itself is zero. Thus, e of infinity equals zero. Now we use this in our expression for i of t. We know that the arctangent of infinity is pi over 2. So, negative pi over 2 plus c equals zero, which means c must be pi over 2. We have now found the complete expression for our function i of t is equal to pi over 2 minus the arctangent of t. The moment of truth has arrived. Remember, our original integral is simply i evaluated at t equals 0. Our goal was to find i of 0, so let's substitute t equals 0 into our final expression for i of t. This gives us pi over 2 minus the arctangent of zero. The arctangent of zero is simply zero. And so we have our astonishing result. The integral of sine of x over x from zero to infinity is equal to pi over two. Let's take a moment to visualize what this means. The function sine of x over x is also known as the sinc function. Here is a graph of the function. Notice how it starts at 1 and then oscillates with decreasing amplitude. The integral represents the net area under this curve. The positive lobes, shown in green, add to the area, while the negative lobes, shown in red, subtract from it. Even though the function goes on forever, these contributions converge to a finite value. And that final beautiful value for the net area is exactly pi over 2, a truly remarkable result from a seemingly impossible integral. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this journey through the Dirichlet integral, please give this video a like and subscribe for more beautiful mathematics.